well, once a once a teacher, you are also a researcher, and it is always it is always a what we call this a challenge for us to conduct research in our own specific field of disciplines. But action research is another kind of research wherein uh, we are tasked to do. What is action research? What are the most common concerns in doing action research? These are the things that we will be answering uh, through this live session. Ayan, again, you can invite your friends para po uh, makinig sa atin during our live session. So, let's start. So, your questions, my answer. This is our first live research coaching. And again, my books, Practical Research under Golden Chronica Publishing House and under Lorimar Publishing House, Action Research Pr Primer for Faculty Researchers. If you have orders, you can just contact 0939-427-0205. So let's start. So the first question, the first question that uh, a follower from Facebook asked, how do we gather and analyze data in action research when the design is qualitative research? Pa, pwede bang, ang magandang tanong kasi dyan ay, pwede ba kaming gumawa ng action research na qualitative? Okay? Ano, participants, what do you think is the answer there? Can we create, can we create an action research na qualitative? What is your idea about it? Okay? Ay, wow, nakaabot tayo ng Mindoro. Hi po, Ma'am Lizelle. So, what is your idea about action research? Can we do a qualitative action research? Ayan. So, in this discussion, we will talk about first the nature of action research, qualitative approaches to action research, will it fit, and data gathering and analysis in qualitative action research. So, itong tatlong ito, ang gagamitin natin para sagutan Yung tanong ni Sir Simon. Ayan. So, nature of action research. Ano ba, para saan ba talaga ang action research? Bakit maraming nauhumaling sa paggawa nito? At bakit ang action research ay isa sa mga, uh, kumbaga, uh, isa sa mga challenges ng bawat, uh, ng bawat teachers? Okay. Number one, what is the nature of action research? So accordingly, action research is a disciplined process of inquiry conducted by and for those taking the action. The primary reason for engaging in action research is to assist the actor in improving or refining his or her action, according to Sagor of, on 2000, published at ASCD. So wha what is action research accordingly? A action research, there is an actor, okay? There is an actor. And what is the purpose of this actor? This actor enjoys a certain practice. He or she enjoys a certain principle. He or she enjoys a certain practice. Okay? So any of those three, ibig sabihin, may kinasanayan siyang practices, may, kinasaya, may kinasanayan siyang gawi, may kinasanayan siyang, uh, how will we call that, uh, mannerism, something like that. However, at the end of action research, you must gear towards improvement or refinement. So, ibig sabihin, meron kang ini-improve, meron kang ni -re refine meron kang gustong pagandahin. Bakit ka mo? Ano ba ang idea tungkol sa action research? Okay? Ano ba ang idea tungkol sa action research? The idea about action research is that hindi porket hindi mo alam ang isang bagay, ay mali na. Ulitin natin ha. Hindi porket hindi mo alam ang isang bagay, halimbawa hindi mo siya ginawa. Hindi porket hindi mo yun alam, sasabihin mo dun sa practice ay mali na. Okay? Ang action research is teaching us that there is a space for improvement no matter how old or new the practice is all about. Ibig sabihin po nito, uh, ang action research nagbibigay siya ng daan para makita natin, ano pa ba ang ating i-improve? Ayan. What are the things that we need to improve in ourselves? So, that's the purpose of action research. Kaya kayo teachers, kapag kayo po ay gagawa ng action research, wag title ang isipin niyo. Wag title ang isipin niyo. 
Ang isipin nyo, kung meron ba kayong practices na, isines, na isinasagawa sa kasalukuyan na dinatnan nyo nang nandyan. Okay? Kung meron ba kayong ganon na ginagawa, dinatnan nyo nang ganyan. And at the back of your mind, you're telling yourself, I think kailangan mabago itong practice na ito. I think kailangan i-refine natin ito. Ayan. Yun yung challenge ng action research. At kung bakit ang action research ay tinatawag na problem-centered? It is because kapag wala kang problema sa kahit anong research, isang malaking problema iyon. Okay? Kung wala kang problema sa kahit anong research, action research man yan, full research man yan, journal type of, uh, kumbaga ay uh, yung, yung compressed na research man yan, naisip mo lang yan, dapat may problema kang sinasagutan. And let it be uh, a thought to you na doesn't mean na hindi mo alam ang isang bagay, mali na yun. Kasi hindi mo, hindi mo ginagawa. Ang tingin mo doon, mali. No. Ang ibig sabihin ng action research, there is always a space for improvement. No matter how old or new the practice is. Now, let us continue. So, action research is a form of co collective, okay? Ulitin natin. As collective self-reflective inquiry. Ibig sabihin, hindi lang isang tao ang nakakaranas. Ibig sabihin, maraming tao ang nakakaranas niyan. Ang mahirap sa action research ay ito. Minsan, akala natin, ito ay problema. Pero sa totoo lang, yung pala ang actual form na solution. Meron naman akala natin, Maganda na itong practice na ginagawa natin, no pala yung pala ang problema. That's why one criteria should be the word collective. Ano ibig sabihin sa itong collective? Ibig sabihin, maramihang tao ang nakakaranas nito. Is a form of collective self-reflective inquiry undertaken by participants in social situations in order to improve the rationality and justice of their own social or educational practice. So ibig sabihin, When you conduct an action research, at the end of your research, meron kang ini-improve. Yan. Meron kang ini-improve. Whether it is a practice, whether it is a situation, whether it is a way of life. So at the end of every action research, meron kang ini-improve. Let me give you an example. Uh, the teaching of science. Ayan, doon tayo sa the teaching of science. By the way, before I continue, baka po may mga nanonood sa atin na hindi pa nag-share ng kanilang pangalan at email address doon sa chat box, please do so kasi that will be the source of your e-certificate. Thank you po. So, let me continue. Say for example, in science. So, sa science, uh, halimbawa, puro ka lang lecture. For the past years, lecture ka lang ng lecture. And then, Uh, nakita mo habang tumatagal, bumababa ang passing, ang pagpasa, yung bilang ng pumapasa sa subject mo. Magugulat ka sa ibang subject, pumapasa naman yung mga batang ito. Pero sa subject mo, sila lang ang hindi pumapasa. Sila ay hindi nakakapasa sa iyo. At lagi mo sinasabi sa sarili mo, mahirap talaga subject ko. Ayan, mahirap talaga ang subject ko. But if you will be doing action research, what you will do is what? You will reflect. You will be uh, having a self-reflection of yourself and look at this collective people who is experiencing the way you teach. Ayan. And after that, anong gagawin mo pagkatapos nun? Then, you will try to investigate bakit sila bumabagsak, bakit sila mahina. So that is an action research. Why? Because at the end of your research, ano ang gusto mong gawin? Gusto mong i-improve ang sarili mo gusto mong i-improve ang pagtuturo mo. So that is action research. Now, let's go to to the question being asked by our Facebook follower. Earlier days of 1944, according to Kurt Lewin, our way of dealing researches only created books and journal, which which now ganito pa rin ang pagtingin natin sa research. Pag natapos mo yung research mo, na-publish na internationally, what is that? Na-publish na, na in a Scopus Index publication. What's next? Can you answer me? Pag na-publish yung research mo, 
Ano ang next mong goal? Paramihan na lang ng certificate? No. Sabi ni Kurt Lewin, these big ideas should not be only contained on books but must be put into action. You ca I can still remember the the number of uh, published or hard-bounded thesis and dissertation in most libraries among universities and colleges and graduate schools. Nandun sila sa aparador. At nabubuhay lang yung research na yun kapag may isang taong nangahas na kumuha ng librong yun, buksan, at sabihin niya, gagawin ko ulit ito. Action research. Pero yung mga research na ginagawa natin personally, after it, ano nangyayari? Action research should contribute to change, should contribute to change in practices, to the improvement of practices. It must lead us back to the reflection of our practices. So that's what Kurt Lewin uh, mean when he said this research or these books must be put into action. And that's the time action research was born in this planet. It was in 1944, and Kurt Lewin became the father of action research. Now, the question is, just comment in, in the chat box. What do you think action research is all about? Is it research in action or research about action? Sige nga, I want you to answer this question. Which is which? Is it research in action or research about action? Sige nga po, tingnan natin. Ano po kaya ang, ang, ano kaya ang action research? What is these all about? Ayan. Is it research in action or research about action? May I hear, may I see your responses? I'm checking now the chat box. Tignan natin kung may mga mag -re sa kanila. Ayan. Oh, thank you dun sa 21 participants natin. Ano po kaya ang, res ang action research? Is it research in action or research about action? Okay. Sige nga, tignan natin. Thank you po, Miss Espinosa. Research in action. Thank you, Ma'am Lizelle. Thank you po, Miss Abid. Wow, mga nagre-response sila. Thank you so much po. So as, as a speaker in this kind of webinar, kapag nagre-response ang mga participants, nakakatuwa kasi usually ang mga participants ko nasa harap ko, as in live talaga siya. Pero ngayon, dahil nga sa COVID, as a speaker, uh, nakakatuwa kapag nagre-response kayo dun sa chat box because that's the only way na tayo po ay nakakapag interact sa isa't isa. Ayan. So, let's answer the question. What is action research? Saan siya nakafocus? Sige nga. Action research, the focus of action research is research in action. Just like what Lewin said, it is research in action. Ibig sabihin, it's like action. Kumikilo siya. Okay? Naglalakad ka, daladala mo yung research. Hindi siya yung pinag-uusapan nyo lang yung action. Hindi ganun. That is research about action. Pero naglalakad ka, daladala mo yung data mo at pupuntahan mo mismo yung, yung bagay na gusto mong baguhin dahil meron kang data. That's research in action. It's like telling action speaks louder than words. Yan. So, Research in action. So, according to Branick in 2010, it is called as research in action because there is a close relationship between knowledge acquisition and action. It only means that action research is not passive. Hindi siya passive way of learning. Hindi yung pag nakuha mo na, ah, ito pala ibig sabihin ng review of related literature niya, tapos na. No. Ibig sabihin ito, ikaw po ay habang nagre-research, meron ka mga action na ginagawa. And through the course of action, that is the only way you are acquiring knowledge. AR embraces the concept of collaboration with the will to better recognize the problem or the issue, which means hindi abstract 
ang problema mo. Ang alam niyo ibig sabihin abstract, hindi hindi kumbaga ay nasa utak mo lang. Ibig sabihin nakaka na-encounter mo, na-experience mo, nayayakap mo, nahahawakan mo, nararanasan mo. Ibig sabihin problems in action research are real problems. Okay? Problems in action research are real problems. This only means that all problems in action research should be considered as something that is felt, that is experienced, that is being practiced. Yung best ko na nauulit, yung salitang practiced, because it's the real purpose of action research. I can still remember when I was in Tagig, uh, ang gaganda ng mga action research ng DepEd Tagig Pateros. I can still remember uh, naging problema nila yung reading sa bata, yung mga teach, yung group of teachers, gumawa sila nung parang uh, snake and ladders na, na mat, gumawa sila ng snake and ladders na parang mat na ganun, and then kapag nakakabasa yung bata, nag, nagpo-progress siya one space and another, hanggang sa makarating siya sa finish line. So, ibig sabihin, motivate yung bata kasi there is a finish line dun sa nilalaro nilang board. And then, halimbawa, nabasa niya ng tama, ibig sabihin nun, magpo-progress siya ulit. Yan. So, there is an action in that. At ano yung problem na meron na nakikita siya? Ang problem na nakikita niya ay yung pagbasa ng mga bata. Again, kung meron pa pong hindi nakakapagsulat ng kanilang pangalan sa chat box, please type so. Action research involves all the stakeholders in a shared responsibility as to its results. Yes, dapat pag natapos mo action research mo, huwag mong saraninin. Huwag mo lang basta-basta, ay, proud ka kasi nakatapos ka. Hindi. Ang action research, kapag natapos yan, sinishare yan. Hindi pwede pagkatapos mo gawa ng action research, ay, akin lang to. No, hindi pwede yon. In the sharing of action research, Two things might happen. Two things might happen. Number one, may mga taong yayakap sa resulta ng action research mo at may mga taong magagalit sa resulta ng action research mo. In both ways, those two groups, kailangan mo silang pagbatiin. Why? Number one, dun sa mga taong yayakap sa resulta mo, they, they only mean that change is needing or change is needed in this organization. Doon sa mga kontra, kontra sa resulta mo, probably they might be thinking of other better ways rather than the result of your study. Or, kailangan pa nilang paliwanagan bakit naging ganun ang resulta ng study mo. Aling man sa dalawa ang makaharap mo after your research, you need to face them. You need to share to them the result of your research study. So, dapat po involve ang mga stakeholders. And lastly, the result leads to an action, actionable knowledge. Kaya nga siya tinawag na action. Ibig sabihin, kung hindi gumagana itong teaching practice na to, ano pwedeng gawin mo next? Ayan. So, that's how you do an action research. That's why it's called action of research in action. Now, Let's go to the second question being asked to me by a follower in Facebook. Sabi niya doon, Sir, pwede bang gumawa ng qualitative research na action research? Ayan. Uh, tingin niyo po, participants. Tingin mo, pwede bang gumawa? Pwede ba natin gamitin yung action research? Okay? Pwede ba natin gamitin yung construct ng action research Tapos, ang gagawin mo ay qualitative research. Ayan, sige nga. Tingin nyo, pwede kaya yun na yung ang, ang research mo ay action research, ang structure mo action research, pero qualitative ang gagawin mo. What do you think, teachers? Sabi ni Dr. Leharde, yes daw. Oh, what do you think? Kasi di ba, common nating nakikita pag action research, may mga statistics, may mga graphs, may mga charts. Pero pwede kaya? 
na qualitative research ang structure, ang, ang methods of design ng qualitative research mo. Pwede po kaya? Ayan. I'm happy because you are positive about it. Because ito ang nakakalungkot sa qualitative research. Ang nakakalungkot sa qualitative research ay pag sinabing quali, ay mali, mali, pag sinabing action research, lagi na lang natin sinasabing dapat may data ka, dapat may number ka, dapat magpapatest ka. Ayan. One thing that one thing that that is very good in action research is that action research is flexible in nature. Napaka-flexible po ng action research pagdating sa kanyang nature. Why? Because in action research, it allows us to see, okay? It allows us to say that its structure is not only solely for quantitative means. Ibig sabihin, hindi lang po, okay? Hindi lang po para sa quantitative ang iyong qualitative ang iyong action research na ginagawa. So paano po natin gagawin? How will each design fit with one another? Paano natin pag pagbabatiin yung dalawang design? Ayan. So according to Edwards in 2018 as she published a lecture at the University of Sydney, Australia, University of Technology in Sydney. Sabi niya, one of the characteristics of action research is that it contains, okay, it contains an idea or it contains a strand of an exploratory research. What is an exploratory research? We do exploratory research because we want to explore something. This is we do exploratory research if we want to explore something that is very unique in your institution. Okay? That is very unique in your institution and there and the limited review of related literature and studies bars you in understanding fully that phenomenon. Tagalogin natin. Ginagawa mo ang exploratory research kapag yung case na ginagawa mo ay unique sa research environment mo. Unique. Ibig sabihin, karakteristik ng respondents nandyan lang sa lugar mo. Hindi mo pwedeng makita sa iba. Karakteristik ng problema, daladala rin ng karakteristik ng respondents at hindi mo rin pwede makita sa iba. Ngayon, bakit ka nag exploratory research? Kasi kulang ang review of related literature and studies. Have you experienced this while doing research? Comment below. Uh, wala kayong, ang ganda-ganda ng pagkaka-structure ng problema mo, pero wala kang makitang RRL. Wala kang makitang updated na review of related literature. At parang pinagdamutan ka ng pagkakataon kasi binaliktad mo na ang Google Ginanap mo na sa mga library ng luma, wala kang makitang review of related literature na maaaring tumugma dun sa hinahanap mong problema o maaaring mag-define o mag-describe sa hinahanap mong problema. Have you experienced that while doing research? Di ba? At napaka at napaka bigat, okay? Napaka bigat dalhin kapag ikaw ay wala ka na nang makitang RRL, ang hirap pang maintindihan ng problema mo. Kapag ganyan po ang study at nasa action action research phase ka pa lang, ang gawin mo muna, exploratory research. Okay? Gawin mo muna siyang exploratory research. Okay? Bakit? Kasi po ang exploratory research, hinahayaan po tayo ng exploratory research na makita muna yung situation. Okay? You plan to explore first and then you analyze what you explore. Behavior ba yan? Perception ba yan? So, paano natin ipifit ang qualitative research design sa action research? So, ganito gagawin natin. Yan. Ang action research ay sumusunod sa ganitong structure. Magsimula ka muna sa isang case o problem, propose a solution, 
evaluate, recommendation, and then create a new action. After this, babalik ka ulit. Bigyan ko kayo ng example. Halimbawa, ang case mo ay hindi marunong a ah, mababa ang vocabulary ng bata. Ayan, mababa ang vocabulary niya. So, you test them na mababa ang kanilang, uh, uh, yung vocabulary nila, ang ginamit mo kasing means ay writing. Okay? Nakita mo sa writing ng mga bata na mababa ang kanilang graph sa vocabulary. So, that is your pro that is your case. Now, wisip ka ng solusyon. Sabi mo, ano kaya? Gamit tayo ng mga, uh, yung, mga yung mga games, mga vocabulary games sa sa computer, sa internet na maaring makatulong sa bata natin na umangat yung vocabulary. Action research to ha. So nagpalaro ka ng game, halimbawa yung Hang Aru, if you can still remember Hang Aru, something like that. Yung yung may ano, yung may nakabite na kangaroo, something like that. So, yun ang yun ang solution mo. Tapos after that Every week, naglalaro yung mga bata ng Scrabble. Alimbawa lang naman ito. So that is your end in your mind. So ang ginawa mo after, after almost six weeks of doing that routine, Monday, Hangaru, Wednesday, Scrabble, Friday, uh, both, Hangaru at saka Scrabble. For six weeks, ginawa mo. Now it's time to test. Data analysis tayo. Aba, nakita mo. Tumaas ang mean ng mga bata sa vocabulary. Ano yung mga features ngayon ng ginawa mo? Ano yung mga marerecommend mo? Yan. Ibig sabihin, kapag na-recommend mo na siya, ano ang next part? Ia-apply mo siya. Dahil yan ay action research, hindi yan tumitigil. After mong i-apply, anong gagawin mo? Babalikan mo ulit yung bago mong ina-apply kung meron na naman siyang problema. Halimbawa, after six months, parang nagkaroon na ng plateau dun sa vocabulary learning ng bata. Problem yan. Kasi according sa first research mo, effective yung paglalaro ng hang aru at scrabble. After six months, hindi na gumagana. So, there is already a plateau. Therefore, may bago kang problema. Yan ang action research. Ibig sabihin, it's a cycle na hindi natatapos. Ngayon, paano mo naman kaya i-integrate sa framework na ito yung qualitative research? So what is qualitative research? According to Creswell, it is an approach for exploring and understanding the meaning of individuals or groups ascribed to a social or human problem. In other words, teachers, when we say qualitative research, we focus on three things. Number one, human experience. Number two, phenomenon. Ayan, phenomenon. And the number three is what? The number three is narratives. Ulitin natin. Human experience, phenomenon, and narratives. Ang qualitative research, kakaiba sa quantitative research, ang qualitative research po ay tumutugon sa karanasan ng tao. It explores the naturalistic perspective of human experience. That is why the first characteristic of qualitative research is that it is multiple perspective. Let me give you an example. Kung gagawan mo ng action research, yung mga nangyayari sa social media ngayon, pabor sa ganito, hindi pabor sa ganito, dun mo marirealize that human experience has a multiple perspective na hindi lahat ng tao ay pare-pareho ng pananaw sa isang issue. A closer example, sa ibang tao, pag sinabi mong Pasko, that is very important occasion. Pero sa ibang tao na nakaranas na halimbawa na matayan sila during Christmas season, hindi mo maaalis minsan na malungkot sila pagdating sa Pasko. At mapipilit mo ba sila nagtanggapin yung idea mo na dapat maging masaya sila? Siyempre hindi. Why? Because human experience is viewed in a multiple perspective manner. The second one is naturalistic. The ability of qualitative research to view human experience in a naturalistic manner without, okay, 
without being in a laboratory, hindi katulad sa quantitative research na meron kang kinokontrol at meron ka minamanipulate. Sa qualitative research, pag pumasok ka sa classroom na maingay, yun yun. Yun yung naturalistic perspective. Kapag nakikita mo sa internet, na, sa Facebook na napaka-toxic, that is a natural, that is very natural. Why? Because the multiple perspective of human being clash with one another. That is why the third characteristic of qualitative research is that it is interpretive in nature. Ngayon, pag sinabi mong interpretive, ito ang una kong sasabihin sa inyo. Dapat may basihan ang interpretation mo. I want to share to you the most commonly used uh, theory in qualitative research. One, constructivism. Okay? Quality, in qualitative research, they sometimes use uh, they sometimes use uh, constructivist approach. Why? Because constructivist approach allows us to see human experience as a product of society. O, tignan mo. Minsan naiinggit ako sa mga nasa probinsya. You know why? Kasi parang ang payak-payak ng buhay. May iba naman na hindi mo mapipi, hindi mo masasabi, hindi mas pipiliin pa rin nilang tumira rito sa Maynila kasi masasabihin nila mas kumpleto ang buhay. It is you can only see that when you look on a constructivist manner. Ibig sabihin, ito mga nasa probinsya, anong pinag anong pinagbabasihan nila? What is the the ano yun? What is the grounds of their experience? The grounds of their experience is yung pagiging payak, pagiging simple. Sociologically speaking, they are just looking on the function. Okay? Yung function ng buhay. Functionalist. Ngayon, sa, sa mga nandito sa syudad, maaring ganun din. Nakikita nila yung pagiging kompleto. Ayan. Yung pagiging kompleto. Structure naman sila nakatingin. These are theories that we can use. Okay? When you do a qualitative research and when you integrate qualitative research in action research. Ah, nandito, nandito pala si Ms. Nitoral. Hi, Ms. Nitoral. Thankful na naka-attend naka ka. So, uh, so this is uh, those theories that I just mentioned a while ago, i-integrate mo yan pag ikaw ay gumagawa ng qualitative research. Dapat meron kang theory. Okay? O halimbawa, yung mga nagsasalpo ka na idea sa Facebook, okay? Bakit? Ano ang theory ang pwede natin gamitin para mas maintindihan yun? Pwede natin gamitin ang conflict theory, isang isang anyo ng sociological theory. So, yun po yung mga bagay na dapat nating mat, dapat nating tandaan kapag nakaharap tayo sa isang qualitative research. And another one, in qualitative research, the researcher is also the participant. Okay? In qualitative research, hindi maaalis yung idea na ang na ang tao o yung mismo researcher ay nagiging participant sa mismo niyang study. Okay? Minsan kasi, uh, tayo rin mismo ay nakaranas ng experience na yon. Let me share you an example. When I did my first, uh, my second international published research about the culture of excellence in a Paasco accredited school, Ako ay miyembro ng paaralang yon. Therefore, the researcher is also participant. Kaya nga sa qualitative research, hindi mawawala ang bias. Hindi mawawala sa qualitative research ang tinatawag na biases. Ang biases ang tinat ay, ang other words ng biases, ito yung mga prejudice natin. Ito yung mga mabilisang assumption natin na walang pinagbabasehan. So, when we do this, when you try to do these uh, biases, ang nangyayari sa atin, na infect nalalason yung mga data natin. And qualitative research, very prone ang qualitative research dyan. Kaya anong dapat mong gawin? Number one, there must be a thick literature review. Number two, there, there must be a validation from the respondents. And number three, there must be what we call expert validation. Okay? Again, there must be a thick literature review. There must be validation from our respondents. And number three, there must be what we call expert validation. Ang tawag po dyan ni Kolatsi ay triangulation. 
we called it as the data triangulation. And when we say data triangulation, itinatapat natin yung mga nakolekta natin data saan? Para suriin ng mga existing studies, ng mga mismong participants, at ng mga expert na nandyan. Ginagawa natin yan sa qualitative research para mawala yung tinatawag na internal biases at mapataas yung reliability ng ating study. Ulitin ko ha, ginagawa natin yan sa qualitative research para mabawasan yung tinatawag na internal o yung, o yung mga researcher biases at mapataas yung value na tinatawag nating reliability. Now, Balik tayo sa framework natin kanina. How can I make an action research that follows qualitative research? Paano daw ba? So, ganito yan. Mag-start ka sa human experience or phenomenon. Bibigyan ko kayo ng example. Yung mga core values ninyo sa school, minsan magandang pag-aralan yan. Bakit? Yan kasi ay na-experience. Yan kasi ay nararanasan. Ngayon, dahil yan ay nararanasan, hindi mo siya maaaring ma-quantify. So dahil hindi mo siya maaaring ma-quantify, ano ang nangyayari? Pwede mo siyang i-observe. And that calls of, for a qualitative data gathering. So mag-start ka sa anumang human experience o phenomenon. O kahit dyan sa probinsya mo. Meron pa ba tayong practices na sinusunod dyan na hanggang ngayon hindi mo alam bakit sinusunod pa rin ang mga tao? May naniniwala pa ba sa kulto sa, sa aswang kung ikaw ay pupunta dito sa Maynila? Ayan. O kaya naman, pag ikaw ay nasa Sikihor, ano ba ang pinagmula ng takot ng mga tao doon sa mga mambabarang? Yan po ay mga human experience o phenomenon na tinatawag. At kung ikaw ay gagawa ng action research at gusto mong gawin qualitative ito, dyan ka magsimula. Okay? Dyan ka magsimula. Now, another one that we can that we can view is you need to immerse or to observe. Yan. You need to immerse or to observe. Ano ibig sabihin ng immerse or observe? Kailangan nasusundan mo yung development. Okay? Kailangan nasusundan mo yung development ng iyong uh, ng iyong data collection. Ang ibig sabihin lamang nito, kailangan ikaw ay ano? Kailangan ay nandun ka rin sa environment. Hindi pwedeng uh, nagka-qualitative research ka at ikaw ay sitting pretty dyan sa bahay nyo. May immersion tayong tinatawag. So, Meron kang observation rubrics na daladala, -dala, may mga checklist kang ginagawa. Ayan. Yun po ang ibig sabihin nun. Then the next one is, you need to interact. One of the best thing in qualitative research is this. Human interaction is inevitable. Okay? When you do a qualitative research, hindi mo pwedeng alisin yung value ng human interaction sa qualitative research. Therefore, when you do a qualitative research in action research, number one, naka-immerse ka. Number two, nakatutok ka sa value ng human interaction. At kapag nasundan mo na yan, know your design. Ano ba nga hanapin mo? Kwento ba ng buhay ng tao? Narratives? Themes ba? Theory ba? Ayan. Patterns ba? Sir, Ilang respondents ba ang pinag-uusapan natin dito? Ayan. Laging tanong yan sa akin ng mga participants ko sa qualitative research. Kasi sila, hindi nila alam ilang ba. Sabi ni Creswell, okay, healthy na, healthy sa qualitative research, yung na 7, 7 to 9, yung pinakamababa, ah, 7 to 9, pinakamadami na ay 15, 17, 19. Pero kung ikaw ay magpo-focus group discussion, ayan, kung ikaw ay magpo-focus group discussion, mag-focus group discussion ka ng hindi lalagpas sa walo o siyang. Bakit? Pag nagpo-focus group discussion ka ng labing lima, ang hirap magpiga ng data niyan. Isipin mo na lang, ganito, 
meron kang sampung question. May sampung question kang inihanda. Tapos may labing limang tao kang tatanungin sa focus group discussion. Ang una mong tanong dyan, lahat ba yan magre-respond? Lahat ba yan sasagot? At kung lahat yan sumagot, you are talking about 150 different responses. 10 questions times 15 participants. Iba pa yung mga side comments nila at follow-up questions na idadagdag mo. Nag-gets nyo yung hirap kapag, kapag gumawa ka ng isang napakalaking focus group discussion? So, when you do an action research, focus only dun sa naka-experience talaga, mga 5 to 7 respondents. That's why at the end of your study, hindi ka mag-generalization. Hindi ka po mag-conclusion. Okay, tandaan niyo yan. Sa qualitative research, we discourage researchers making a generalization because the number of your respondents is never generalizable. Did you get what I mean? Hindi ka pwede mag-generalization kasi yung bilang ng mga participants mo ay hindi ka gene, hindi ka gene generalize. Okay? When you remember for us to for us to have a good generalization, we must abide in the law of sampling. Diba? Meron tayo mga sampling scheme na ginagawa. So dun dun pa lang lumalabag na tayo sa role ng generalization. Ang ginagawa po natin sa qualitative research ay naggagawa tayo ng synthesis or pinapakita natin yung essence ng human experience. Pinapakita natin sa Tagalog yung kaluluwa ng karanasan. Ano yung pangkalahatang karanasan ng mga tao? Okay? Yung ibig sabihin ng synthesis or essence. Another one, when we say synthesis, this is the new meaning from the experience. So this is the act. This is the totality of the experiences of the people you have interviewed and this is their new meaning, their new meaning, not the meaning of the whole population. <clears throat> their new meaning. <clears throat> now, ano ang ibig sabihin nito? Pagkatapos nito, dahil ikaw nga ay action research, pero gumamit ka ng qualitative research design, ano ang katapusan ng study mo? Pwede kang gumawa ng bagong policy or advocacy. Ayan. So nakita mo, nakita mo na yung mga bata ay amiable sila. They value amity so much. So anong policy ang pwede mong gawin? Ayan. Anong policy ang pwede mong gawin? Anong advocacy ang pwede mong gawin? Anong program ang pwede mong gawin? Ngayon, iikot ulit yan, pabalik. Dahil nga action research, iikot ulit. Doon ka pwede mag-quantitative research. <clears throat> At kapag ikaw ay nagsimula sa quali at nagtapos ka sa quanti, magiging mixed method research siya. Kaya nga, I'm always telling this to my advice. Kapag meron kayong gustong gawing thesis sa grad school at meron kayong nasimulang action research, maganda na yung action research nyo, palawakin nyo. Palawakin ninyo. And then try to change the method. That's the only way you will realize that there is much more than what you have. So, that is action research. Again, gaya na sinabi ko nung una, hindi porket hindi mo alam ang isang bagay, sasabihin mong mali yun. Okay? Remove that idea on your mind. Because when you do an action research, you embrace change. You put a space, okay? You put a space for possibility of change, okay? You put a space on the possibility of improvement. Now, that is the first question being asked to me. Now, what makes action research and qualitative research compatible with one another? Bakit sila naging compatible? Action research is participatory and democratic. It is because... It is confounded in one setting. The setting is unique, the setting is available, and there are samples inside the setting. Qualitative research, on the other hand, it embraces the natural setting of the problem. It carefully looks at interact, interaction and life itself. Ibig sabihin po nito, katulad ng action research, ang qualitative research po, participatory rin. Okay? Nakafocus ito sa natural setting at tinitignan nito, okay, ang value ng human interaction. 
Action research is socially responsive. Ibig sabihin, tinutugunan nito yung problema ng lipunan niya. Qualitative research is also grounded in the assumption that human experience are socially crafted. Kaya nga tinawag natin itong constructivist. That's why qualitative research can be, number one, postmodernist, number two, participatory, number three, is advocacy-driven. So yung tatlong yan ang nagiging dahilan kung bakit ang qualitative research compatible siya para maging action research. Next, action research intensifies decision-making because of data and enhances policy-making. Qualitative research, on the other hand, embraces the idea that human experience may contribute to likeness and dislikeness of a particular program, of a particular phenomenon, or a particular uh, experience. The dislike and like of, this, of their experiences may contribute to the idea of what to do next on a certain, uh, on a certain program or a policy under study. So yun ang qualitative research. Kung gusto mong gumawa ng bagong polisiya, pag-aralan mo muna ang kapaligiran mo. Kung gusto mong gumawa ng bagong patakaran, pag-aralan mo muna ang nasasakupan mo. Okay? So, that is for action research. And for the last question that I received, data gathering in action research, ang tanong niya, saan ba dapat magsimula ang data gathering sa action research. Bago yung action ba o pagkatapos ng action? Di ba? Ang ganda ng tanong niya. Bago ba yung action o pagkatapos ng action? Well, according to Lewin, action research is research in action. So ano ibig sabihin niya? In both ways, may data gathering. Okay? In both ways, meron kang tinatawag na data gathering. So ibig sabihin nito, magsisimula ka sa data collection sa simula pa lang. Pag napag-aralan mo na yung lumang practice at meron ka ng recommendation, anong gagawin mo next? Pag aaralan mo ulit yung bago, meron ba? May pinagbago ba? So ibig sabihin yan, you will proceed again to the process of data collection. Now, this data collection will allow us to see what type of data do we need to have in our study. Ang data ba natin ay qualitative or quantitative? Siyempre, pag nangolekta ka ng test scores, nangolekta ka ng survey, quantitative. Pag nangolekta ka ng mga experience, ng mga uh, dis, uh, shared practices, qualitative. Yung mga perception na tinatawag. So pag sinabing perception, ito yung pananaw niya. Pero pag sinabi mong behavior, may kasamang action yun. Okay? Sabi ni, ni Chemist and McTaggart, perception and behavior differs in one strand, and it is the inclusion of the action. So while perception is purely endowed in our mind, our behavior, our action is the result of our behavior being driven by our perception about something. So, perception ba or behavior ang kagamitin mo? Or, will you observe ba? Mag-o-observe ka ba? Or non-observation? Saan mo nakukuha yung mga non-observation data? Well, ito yung mga diaries, mga written journals, mga essay, mga non-observation. Bakit siya tinawag na non-observation? Tinawag siyang non-observation kasi po, uh, nakikita mo yung tao without looking at him physically. Nakikita mo yung karakteristik ng tao, nabibigyan ka ng idea tungkol sa karakteristik ng tao without him looking physically. So, observation or non-observation. So, going back to the question, saan ka dapat magsimula ng data collection sa action research? Nagsisimula po tayo ng data collection in action research in both ways. Before, date, before the new action and after the new action. That, that, will, that allows us to continue or to perpetuate the cycle of what we call action research. So action research is a very important element in education because it allows us to see what? It allows us to see the possibility for change and the possibility 
for new practices. So one thing that I'm always telling my researchers is this. Number one, you must always look for a problem, not a title. Okay? Kang magsisimula sa title. Number two, always look, review your methods. Tignan mo yung methods mo. Appropriate ba yung methods mo? And then, lastly, was the, share your data. Share your resources. Share your findings. There will be, be there will be many contradictions about your uh, about your researches. Marami mang ko kontra. Pero one thing is for sure, you need to prove to them that these are the areas for changes, making your research action driven, and that's the reason why we do action research. Now, so that is the end of my presentation. Uh, if you have questions in your mind right now, you can type it in our chat box. And if you have questions in your mind right now, you can uh, type it in our chat box. Ayan. So, nandito pa ba ang lahat? Ayan. If you have questions for you, can ask, uh, you can ask a question. You can type it. If you have something in mind na gusto mong i-clarify, may gusto kang project na pag-aralan, you can type it down. Okay? Meron po ba? Ayan. So, this is, this is our first live research coaching. So, uh, this is our first live research coaching and I hope masusundan pa ito. Ganito po ang gagawin natin. Please follow the page Research Methods in Education. Ayan. It is available in, uh, yes, it is, it's a Facebook page uh, solely dedicated for uh, research methods. You, I will be posting another batch, another set of status there na pwede, nyo, pwede kayo mag-post ng question tungkol sa research and then I will try to discuss it using a uh, live research coaching. Uh, also, yeah, my book still available. Yeah, thank you for that private message. Yeah, it is available. Uh, practical research, discovering meaning in the qualitative way, action research primer by Jonathan Prado and Saren Gadi. Uh, wala pala dito sa phone number ko, no? So, you can just PM me or, uh, yeah, PM me sa Facebook if you have orders. Ayan. So, the, the practical research book is 350 pesos and the action research primer is 200 pesos. Ayan, sinagot ko na kasi bawal daw sa DPI yung walang price. Ayan. So, ayan po. So, I hope for this very short research coaching na ginawa natin, uh, ay natulungan ko kayo, natulungan ko, nasagutan ko yung mga yung mga queries ninyo tungkol action research. May magandang tanong dito nag-iwan in a private sa may nag may nag PM sa akin. Possible pa po ba mag-interview this COVID season? Lagi kong sinasabi ito. Possible. Hanggat papayag ang iyong participant na ma-interview siya using Zoom. Ayan, kung papayag siya na meron siyang kasama sa Zoom o gusto niya one-on-one -on -one lang. Kapag pumayag po ang inyong participant na ma-interview using Zoom, tatanungin niyo po, okay, tatanungin niyo po siya, okay, kung, kung papayag siya naka-video siya or not. Paggagawa po kayo ng mga focus group discussion, lagi-lagi po, tandaan, the focus group dis discussion uh, requires us to have a structured questionnaire. Okay? Para rin po magkaroon ng direction ang pagtatanong ninyo. So, ano man po ang gusto niyong topic tungkol sa research, sige, uh, may nag-PM sa akin kung pwede daw ba foundations of mixed method. Sige, I accept, I'm accepting the challenge. <laughs> sige, foundations of mixed method. I can, I can deliver a very short coaching about it. But please, uh, thank you po sa 27 na umatin. Ayan, I hope hindi ko na sayang yung 1 hour and 6 minutes ninyo. Ayan. I will also provide, yeah, 
Binibigyan niyo ako ng panibagong topic ngayon, validation of research instrument. Yes, I will. Huwag kayong mag-alala. Also, Excel. Yeah, tuturuan ko kayo paano gamitin ang Excel sa data analysis. Okay lang. It's okay lang yan sa akin. Okay? So, I hope nandito yung mga email ninyo. Ayan. Buka nandito naman ata lahat. Ayan. Ika-copy-paste ko lang. Para maayos ko pag-forward pag for your certificates. I hope next time may share nyo po ang aking page na uh, Research Method in Education and please follow me in YouTube na rin. Char! Okay? Thank you po so much. Salamat po. I will be ending the broadcast after uh, 10 seconds. Okay? Maraming maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat. Kita-kita uh, ulit tayo sa next, so our second live research coaching. Yeah, announce ko po yan. Probably, uh, anong araw ba ngayon? Monday? It's probably Friday or Thursday. Ayan. Salamat po sa lahat. Pagpalain po lahat. God bless. Good at having pages. Let me just go.